Ooh, so you're saying it's still my fault, just at a long distance. Like quantum mechanics. I'm picking up the microphone cable, which fell and jerked on my ass. Eventually, it is so they can go straight to him. They don't go to the, the monastery, so everyone, all the nuns are like, what the hell happened to the Hounds of Hell? Aren't the Hounds of Hell supposed to come? And the Hound of Hell is the guy's... Whoa! Welcome to the show. Uh, we were talking about... Never mind. It's too long to explain to start with. It's, it's the Christmas season. Here. See, I brought a hat, but I'm not wearing it on the air because it makes me look dumb, apparently. <laughs> but you guys trust me, it's the Christmas season. Now, you won't see this till April. Maybe May, because it takes a long time to edit the show. And that's the first topic for tonight, which is I need an editor for this show, okay? The idiot I got doing it now just can't get off his ass and do it. It takes him forever. And I'm like, when are you going to get the show edited? And he's like, oh, I got these computer problems. And I'm like, remember the show? Keith explains. And he's like, Colonel Panic, Colonel Panic. And I'm like, now you got to fix this. I'm like, I'm a smart computer person. I... I know how to fix these kinds of computer problems. You should fix them. Just deal with it, okay? I mean, all you have to do is edit the show, and we, we run live to tape, so there's no actual editing, which would involve cutting and putting things together. All you got to do is import it, and then sit there and type some witty crap at the bottom of the screen. And I, I don't even know what you type, because I never watched the show afterwards. I mean, pretty much, I do a show. You know, it's 8.45 right now. 9.15, I am done with this show. 9.25, I'm going to be in the coffee shop drinking coffee. I will never think of this show again. <laughs> People will email me and say, what were you thinking about when you did this show? And I'll go like, I have a show? And then, then it occurs to me that, yes, I, I am in fact a well-paid TV celebrity whom everyone loves, who has a TV show on which I pontificate about various things and then never think of them again because they're they're out of my head into yours. That's that's my mission in life is to take stuff out of my head, put it in your head because my head is full, and your heads, based on the emails, are kind of empty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I need a new editor. If you are capable of being an editor of a show like this, and if you have a lot of free time, and if you don't mind being abused, and if Unlike, like I said, I don't watch the show, but from some of the email, I'm told some of the things the guy puts up underneath me are kind of cruel, or they portray me in a less than flattering light. I don't want that kind of thing. So you need to not do that kind of thing, okay? But just put up the nice stuff underneath, maybe little pointers to the web, or... I mean, there was that one show we did where I answered the questions, and I guess all the guy had to do was put up, he's right, he's right, he's right. I mean, that show got edited quickly, because really it was just, just flash Keith is right after I explained each question. And that, anyway, so there, there we go. New editor. Now, like I said, it's the Christmas season for me, for you, it's mid-June. So, how's the weather, I guess? Um, I don't know what you say in mid-June. Happy Flag Day? <sighs> anyway, for us it's Christmas, and for Christmas season, really... Today, that means it's any time between November 1st and December 25th, really, because it you don't really count December 26th as the Christmas season. That's the Christmas returning season, which I believe stretches until about the 1st. But there's like two months now when it's Christmas, and I keep trying to push it back further and further. They've, they've hit a roadblock at November 1st, which is the day before November 1st is Halloween, and so you can't push Christmas back to before Halloween. It doesn't work because you got all this Halloween stuff in the stores that you want to get people to buy. So you, no one's going to buy Halloween pumpkin, you know, jack-o'-lanterns or something if right next to it there's a Christmas tree. So they, I assume that there are squads of people that sweep through all the stores the evening of Halloween and package up all the Halloween stuff and get the Christmas stuff out because Lord knows that's what I saw like in early November. It was just, it was all Christmas stuff everywhere. It's, it's ruined Christmas for me. Well, Christmas was already ruined for me, but it's ruined it more. And anyway, I have the hat. So I, 
Normally I would be wearing the hat, although of course it's really hot in the studio because of all the lights and the breathing, which is, as you know, the average person gives off like 100, 110 watts of power. When you get 70 of them in a small studio like this, as we do in the audience, <laughs> they, they put on a lot of heat. So we got the air conditioner going at full blast, but it's got to be 95 degrees in here right now, and it'll... It'll probably peak above 100 before the show ends. So if you, if you see me perspiring ever during the show, you'll know that that's the reason. It's, it's one of the things that I'm willing to do in order to, you know, improve all your lives in this fabulous, massive way I do. And I get the email. I know I've saved many of you. Um, thank you. Again, people have tried to send me money, and I've said, no, please don't send money. I have to pay taxes on it. Um, and cash. Or send stuff. Land. Land would be great. You know, you're, several people have deeded me islands. Most of them are very small islands. Um, one of them is apparently only an island at low tide. <laughs> so that, thank you for the thought, but that does me no good. Okay, Because I, I cannot tread water for 13 hours. I've tried. Well, I've been thrown off boats and had to tread water for a while until the Coast Guard got there. And that was maybe seven or eight hours. But I think 13 hours every day to live on an island that you owned would be too much. So I decided not to keep the island. And I'm getting off topic here. I was on Christmas, and then I was on Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, when I was little, Halloween didn't used to be that big of a holiday. Which is, you'd go to, I forget what it was called. I think it was Shopco, up the street. And they'd have a couple aisles of usually flammable costumes for us children to wear with masks that substantially blocked our vision composed largely of black fabric with one reflective band across the top because that's what kept us safe and we would decide who we wanted to be and it was usually like Superman or Batman or the Joker I don't remember much else uh as a child, I was into Superman and Batman and never the Joker, but I always knew the costume was there if I'd wanted it. So we would buy the costumes, and that was pretty much it. There was, like, no other Halloween decorations that I can recall. Nowadays, they fill stores with Halloween decorations. They have, like, the little pots with the hand that, as you get close to them, kind of reaches out and tries to throttle you to death and makes a noise while it does so. Like, ha-ha, really good joke, you're dead. <laughs> what else do they have? They have a little, they have smoke machines. You know, you can, like, buy something and fill your house with smoke, which I think is just, isn't that going to attract attention? Like, I got to assume with the fire department, if you're, if it's like Halloween night and you call them up and go, yeah, the house across the street's filling with smoke, they're going to go, we're not coming out. <laughs> when you see actual flames, call us back. We've driven out to too many houses that were filled with smoke. Just to get there and have people offer us a beverage or candy. <laughs> like, you know, they run up to the front door, pound, 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 pound. And then the door would open, there'd be a guy dressed like a ghost, and he'd go, candy! And the, and the fireman would go, fire? And he'd go, great costumes, kids! <laughs> and then they'd have to turn around and go back to their truck and turn the siren off. And you got to think, as a fireman, turn the sirens off got to suck. Because when you're a fireman driving around with a siren on, that's great. You're like always in a hurry. You got something to do. But driving back to the fire department after not having been at a fire has got to just be depressing. You know, you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll go back and make chili. <laughs> I don't know what firemen do at the firehouse if there's not a fire. I mean, you got to think after a while, the fireman would just be like, let's just set something on fire. <laughs> Just so we can go out. I mean, they probably got cable TV and everything. I wonder if they have TiVo. I hope they have TiVo, because otherwise they'd be like, they'd be like, wait, this is the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll go in two minutes. In two minutes, it'll be commercial, and we'll go. I hope they don't do that. Got it. <laughs> Throw any firemen in the audience, and if you've ever done that, write in. But God, I hope no one writes in. Oh, and the other thing about Halloween, this. This has got a personal, one of the many members of my audience. It's into the dog costumes. Dogs didn't used to have costumes. At least not elaborate costumes. I mean, maybe, maybe a dog would 
dress up like a hobo. And by that I mean you'd, you'd tie a little bindle on the back of the dog. And then you'd be a hobo, and so you'd be like Bob and his hobo dog, Phil. I don't know what a hobo dog would be named. I bet there's something. It'll, it'll come to me in a bit. Probably the editor guy, if I ever find one. We'll look up a good hobo dog name and put it down here or something. And then we'll, everyone will laugh. They'll go, ha, 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 that's a great hobo dog name. Dog costumes. See, dogs didn't used to have costumes. Nowadays, dogs have elaborate... Like, you can spend more in a dog costume than than, it, than I spent on books in my third grade year, which, as I recall, was $38. <laughs> I say recall, but I actually found the receipt. <laughs> I have a lot of boxes in my attic. <laughs> Truthfully, I don't know where some of them came from, but I was in my attic, and I was like, well, I should bring some of these down. I'll look through them, see if I need the stuff in them anymore. And I brought one down, and it was crap from my room, you know, when I was 16. So I was like, well, I probably haven't looked at that box since I was 17 and put everything in it, so let's dig through it. And I'm sifting through it, and I'm like, look, it's a receipt for when I was in third grade for my textbook rental, <laughs> which was a weird thing. Wisconsin, you rent your textbooks. It's like not included in school taxes. Like, you get to school the first day, and they're like, you got to rent your textbooks. And you're in second grade. You're like, what? <laughs> like, just give this to your mom. She'll give you money and come back. And then she did. A little envelope. You put your money in it, and you come back, and they give you a little receipt, your textbook rental for the year. <clears throat> Crazy-ass thing. Here's, here's a related question. This was a question from the audience they asked earlier. Someone said, why are books different sizes? And in particular, why are hardcovers different sizes? They're like, all paperbacks come in, like, three sizes for paperbacks. But like hardcover books, if you're buying hardcover books, they're all over the place. They're tall, they're thin, they're wide, they're thick, they're, they're huge. You're like, why is this? And the reason has to do with trees. And if you think going back, back in the old days, books were huge. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the, the Gutenberg Bible, but it's like the size of a Volkswagen. <laughs> like, like, you need two tall guys to turn pages in the Gutenberg Bible. Okay, it's huge. It's like this wide across. And you're like, flipping pages and you're like and the print is huge and you're like why is the print so large well because they hadn't invented eyeglasses yet so they made the letters really big so that the blind people could read the bible from far away and then over time you know back then all trees were tall and large because we didn't have any reason to cut them down and then they're like hey we can make paper out of trees so they started cutting trees down now the average tree lives like four years and it's got to grow like 30 40 feet in four years Otherwise, they're going to cut it down. And then after four years, they cut it down anyway. I don't know why the trees even try. I mean, you'd think trees would give up by now. They'd be just like, okay, they need us more than we need them. You know? The trees just be like, okay, let's put some seeds out, but tell the seeds don't grow for 15 years. Because trees can do that. Like, they have seeds they put in boxes like in 1890, and the scientists take them out and go, let's try and plant them, and they plant them and stuff grows. Okay? Seeds can do that. But like, the plants could totally screw with us if they wanted. Like, they could all just talk and agree, next spring, no one grow. And we'd make it to, like, May without, you know, corn and wheat and trees for making toilet tissue and stuff. You know, if the trees stopped growing, we'd be dead. And then after we were dead, the trees and the plants could start growing again. And then they'd be like, ha, 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 we beat them. <laughs> I bet they're thinking about, damn, I just told the trees what to do. Well, the editor guy will take care of it. We'll, we'll dub something over that. Like I'll <laughs> talk in Spanish or something. And about something. He'll, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. It's whoever I find. Great editor. Going to fix this little problem I have brought up. Anyway, so by today, since we have so many different sized trees, all books have to be different sizes. Now, hardcovers can be bigger. People are willing to pay more for a hardcover. So you get a tree, you know, it can grow maybe, you know, 18 inches across. That means you can get, you know, an 18-inch book out of it. Because, as, as you may know, the way they make paper is you cut down a tree, and then you, you saw thin little sheets of it off <laughs> with a diamond blade, and then you bleach them because they're, they're tree-colored. A lot of people forget the bleaching part. Like, the Egyptians didn't figure out how to bleach things. That's why 
you look back at all their stuff, it's all tree colored. They hadn't thought you want to bleach the thin tree things. Before anyway, so that's right. See hard covers, wide trees, you cut you know, you can only get the 18 inch part out of maybe, you know, a little bit of a tree, but further close to the edges you get narrower things. It has to do with radii and uh, I'll put a graphic. You'll get it. Maybe the Wikipedia page can talk about this. So anyway, paperbacks. Paperbacks, since they're cheaper, they end up using the smaller parts of the trees. And that's, that's why paperbacks are all the same size, because they're the outer parts of the wider trees that we got more of. Glad to help. <laughs> okay, airline travel. Um, this is particularly interesting to me because I have to get up in like eight hours from now and go get in a plane and fly to Illinois. I have to get up at like 4.30 in the morning. And I am, I am not a morning person. I'm not a mid-morning person. I'm actually a late morning person. Like if I could sleep till 11 every day, that'd be great. But I can't, so I'm grumpy all the damn time. Is what I think people will tell you. But anyway, tomorrow I have to get up at like 4.30 in the morning to make a six-something flight. And I have to be at the airport at like 5.45. Because you got to be at the airport like at least an hour before your flight so you can get through the security line so you can get on the plane. Okay. Now, when I got to be at an airport 15 minutes from my house an hour before the plane leaves, for the first flight in the morning, it's not like there can even be people there ahead of me that are just slow. Like, I'm on the first plane leaving. There's no one in line ahead of me, and I still have to be there an hour ahead of time. Okay. The terrorists have already won. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why we even discuss this anymore. You know, it's... Okay, I agree. Blowing up buildings is bad, okay? But making me get up an hour early is, let's say that's one seventy-four thousandth as bad as blowing up a building. And tomorrow there are going to be like 30,000 people flying. And the day after that, 30,000 people. Okay, it adds up, for God's sakes, people, is all that I'm saying. It adds up. It's, it's just, really, just terrorists, we give up. Just stop blowing us up. Send us your demands. A million dollars. We'll give you a million dollars, okay? Do you know what you can get with a million dollars wherever you live? I don't know where you live, but <laughs> I'm going to assume it's cheaper than here. Because I live here, and there are no terrorists here, which makes me think they can't afford it. <laughs> So wherever they live, let's just give them enough money to get cable TV. Because <laughs> truthfully, if you got cable TV, if you can watch Jerry Springer, how much worse can your life be? I mean, look, it's time for Jerry. <laughs> okay, here's something else. Someone else, someone at work asked me to explain. They said, Keith, can you explain suntan lotion? I said, what do you mean explain suntan lotion? Like, should you put suntan lotion on? Yes. Yes, if you're going to be outside, you should put suntan lotion on. And they said, no, not that part. I kind of know that part. How does it work? And I was like, well, it's suntan lotion. <laughs> you put it on and you don't get a sunburn. And they're like, okay. I'm like, is that what you want to hear? And they're like, no, we actually want to know how it works. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll make something up. I'm like, okay. Suntan lotion is stuff that absorbs energy at the particular wavelengths of suntan rays, which are light waves, except they're above the visible part of the spectrum. And they're like, okay, there's too much detail. <laughs> I'm like, okay, suntan lotion is magic. <laughs> you put it on and you don't get sunburned. They're like, more detail than that. And I'm like, there's, there's no more detail in between, okay? There's suntan lotion is magic. And there's the actual reason it works. There's no in between those two, you know. It's, it's, it's so then I was, you know, I had to explain, you know, there's there's UVA, there's UVB, and then there's there, there's the suntan lotion that works by absorbing those particular frequencies and then re-radiating it at other, you know, frequencies, which is great because until I really started to explain this, I didn't realize when when you're wearing suntan lotion, you're brighter than you'd be without suntan lotion because. Because the suntan lotion is absorbing this ultraviolet energy and it re-radiates it, some of it, in the visible spectrum. So, like, there's more light coming off you when you put suntan lotion on than not. And then I was thinking, well, this would be great because we, 
we had to be able to come up with lotions that convert all kinds of, of energy waves into visible light. <laughs> like, you know, here's a lotion that converts, you know, heat into light. And here's one that converts sound into light, because sound is... Yeah. Like, you could get to where, you know, like you put this crap on. This is like, you know, 100 years from now. I'm going to patent it. Don't try and make money off this without paying me. Okay, but like you'd go out and you'd put this crap all over your body. Then you go to a disco... And then the music would start, and you just start flashing with the music. <laughs> that's, that's such a great idea. Man, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Except I did. I thought of it like a week ago. <laughs> and I wrote it down so I could tell you. See, now I've got proof that I thought of it. So I can sue you if you use it. Okay, here's the next one. We, last week we went to see uh, a comedian. Very famous comedian, except I, I hate name droppers, so I'm going to... Protect her identity. So let's say we went to see uh, Katie Riffin. <laughs> Famous comedian, Katie Riffin. You may have heard of her. Except you haven't, because I made up that name. So we went to see her. And, and then through another friend of ours. Again, I'm not name dropping, so I guess I'm going to call him Roz. <laughs> Our friend Roz happens to know Katie Riffin. Riffin, Katie Riffin. I didn't say Riffin. I'll fix that in post. We'll fix that in post. And he could arrange for us after the after the little comedy thing to go backstage and meet Katie and talk to her and get our picture taken and stuff. And let's say Katie came out and knowing she's in Silicon Valley, just proceeded to rip on the iPhone, which she has and likes, except she hates it. I truly didn't plan it, but my iPhone fell out of my pocket. Since I'm in Cupertino, uh, who can take the money back for this piece of shit? Because as with all technology, you can't hate it until you own it. Like I, when I was a child, before I had computers, I loved them. And now that I own them, I despise them. Because they, they make my life miserable in so many ways. Like, without a computer, there are only 400 things in my house that can make me miserable. And with a computer, there's 401. And that last one is really good at it. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so after the concert, we're all backstage. We're, we're posing. We're picture taking. We're like, hey, good to see you. And then she's like, so you guys work on the iPhone? We're like, no. We work near the people that work on the iPhone. But do we look cool enough to work on the iPhone? No. No, we work on crap you've never heard of and don't care about. Well, except for John. He works on the iPod. He invented it, in fact. It was his idea. Originally, the iPod was going to be a telephone answering machine. <laughs> Think about it, the name makes more sense. The i would it would be video answering machine. See, that was the i part, and then the pod it was shaped like a pod. It was going to plug into your telephone. When people called you, it would look at them through the telephone line, and you'd be able to see if they were lying. <laughs> when people lie, they're kind of shifty, and their eyes blink back and forth. We're going to sell it like you know for you know people after a date, like you know, oh yeah, the date was great, yeah. I, time you know if, if you can see the people leaving you a message you'd know they were lying to you but since you can't on the phone you don't know this so but no john was like no how about a tiny digital music player and you know history was made so good going john anyway so we're we're backstage and she's like okay so what it does this what do i do and we're like explaining things and suddenly it's like a tech support session <laughs> Not, not not terribly long, but just lots of questions, lots of how do we do this, how do we do that. You're a famous star, we're nobodies. Well, except for me, I'm a famous celebrity. <laughs> Beloved by several. <laughs> except for you Harry Potter fans. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. Okay, it's been another month. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love Harry Potter. I love everything about Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the best book series ever written <laughs> involving young male magicians with one girl. I guess there was more than one girl, but really one main girl. It was like Encyclopedia Brown, but with wands. <laughs> and yeah, uh, you couldn't flip to the back and read the answer. I guess those, those are really the only two differences between the Harry Potter and Encyclopedia and and J.K. Rowling is freaking rich. Whereas I don't think the Encyclopedia Brown guy is that rich. And I think he's dead. Okay. 
four differences between Harry Potter. And I, I don't want to get on that. Okay, here's here's one for Loretta. Um, Loretta, as you may or may not know, is is a voting official. She like when you go vote in California, she's like sitting behind the table and checks your name off the list. And so I told Loretta I would explain to her how you cheat with voting machines. Because now they got the computer voting machines. And people are like, this is great! Because we'll know who won the election at like 8.30 instead of having to wait for like 1.30 in the morning. Because those, those four hours, I can't stay up, for God's sake. So 1.30 in the morning, once every four years to find out who won. So it's critically important that I know half an hour after the election who won. And so they invented electronic voting machines, and they're like, oh, great, you just plug a little card in, you go in, you push the buttons on the screen, you vote, 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 everyone's happy. Ten minutes later, you take them out, you plug them into a thing, a little modem, whatever. 8.30, we know who won. And I'm like, it's great, because I work in computers all the time, and you know what the really cool thing is when you got electronic voting machines? You don't have to wait till 8.30 to find out who won. <laughs> like, you could know it, let's say, two weeks before the election who was going to win. <laughs> Because, see, you can reprogram computers really easy. You can hide crap in the code, and you can, even if you don't hide crap in the code, other people can write programs for them. They're like, well, who could possibly write programs for a voting machine? And I'm like, they freaking broke the TiVo, okay? Like, you go out, you buy a TiVo. The TiVo people don't want you running code on the TiVo. It's a little box. You put it in your living room. But the hackers were like, we want to make it do different stuff. And so they totally reverse engineered. Like, the iPhone. Like, Apple's coming out with an SDK for the iPhone, but they don't need to because everyone else has already figured it out. Like, you can go download a perfectly good SDK from these people that figured out how everything works on the iPhone. I bet that's what Apple's going to do. They're just going to wait till like, late January. They're going to download the SDK from some site. They're going to Command F, Hackers Unlimited, replace with Apple Computer Inc. <laughs> I guess Apple Inc. Find and replace, find and replace, find and replace. Go to the front page, put on a copyright Apple page, and we're done. It'll be cool. And that's great, because all those iPhone guys don't have to work over Christmas, because they hate that. <laughs> like, they had to work all last Christmas, you know, before it shipped, so it would look good on stage, and they, they didn't like it. This Christmas, they don't have to, because the third-party people are doing the work. Oh, what else to talk about? See, all these topics are way too long. I got a minute left. I don't even know how to talk for only a minute. I mean, people have said, Keith, can you talk for, uh, you know, a minute or two in front of this group about things? I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like, why? You don't like them? I'm like, no, it's the minute or two part. <laughs> like, you give me 45 minutes, I can talk. You tell me two minutes, no, I'm terrible at that. I'm like, where would I start? Because when you only got two minutes, you got to start somewhere good. Because you're going to be done like 45 seconds later. You can't meander around and eventually get to the good part. you got to start with the good part. you got to hit good part, good part, good part. This is why people have speech writers. <laughs> See, now i got no time at all. I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I Next time. Next time. Which again for you will be July. Happy July, everyone. Happy 4th of July. It's been great. 4th of July. I love this summer weather. Ah, it's so hot. I, I, I meant to wear my shorts tonight. Okay, goodbye.